So what is good guys Adnan here and with Lineage OS 16 now out for a whole bunch of devices, should you ditch your current ROM for this one? Let's find out in this video. I've been using Lineage OS 16 on my OnePlus 5 for over a week now and trust me when I say this, it outperformed through all of my expectations. None of the custom ROMs I've tried and tested on my device have been able to come even close to what Oxygen OS offered, so I naturally kept reverting back within a few days of testing an AOSP based ROM. But this, this one gave me no specific reason to roll back to Oxygen OS. There are absolutely zero performance drops even at the battery saver mode. I don't game a lot but PUBG on the highest of settings ran at a constant 60 FPS with no bottleneck or throttling at all. But what I liked most about Lineage OS this year is the experience. It's so fluid and native that you wouldn't be able to tell this apart from a stock ROM let alone guess that this is one of the first nightly builds. Apps load just as quick, memory management is outstanding, animations run smooth and overall everything is just very responsive. Battery life that I got out of this ROM was nothing short of incredible either. Take a near stock ROM, deep load it off any Google services, add a few useful features and you end up with A plus battery. Since my phone supports task charge, I saw myself only charging it once a day and that's usually sufficient to last me till the next morning and repeat over again. I'll stop using numbers in my reviews from here on since every phone around has a different battery life depending upon your charge cycle. But take my word for it, battery life would be the least bit of your worries if you opt into trying out Lineage OS. Let's give a little emphasis on the few features you get with this experience. Theming, although still far from being desirable, is a great asset of this ROM, allowing you to choose your accent colors from a list of 10, a system-wide dark mode, and this year it's full AMOLED black if you so choose to. Sadly, this doesn't affect the backdrops of stock apps like the dialer and messages, and this is an effect of the big drawback I found with the ROM, more on that later. There's a whole bunch of display tweaks to get your color profile right where you need it. Anyways, most of what's customizable with Lineage is buried into the system tab. You can choose between hardware and on-screen buttons and if you toggle on the gesture option, you get the pill navigation as well. So that's essentially all the options to please an audience. You can also as usual assign shortcuts to short and long presses of every key and for OnePlus devices specifically you get to play around with the alert slider options a bit. Next up you can tweak the status bar as you wish to and my favorite choose and assign a bunch of off screen gestures to quick launch apps or services. Now that's not a whole lot of customizability for a custom ROM and that's fine, Lineage doesn't advertise itself for being one either. What you see is basically what you get with this package, a near stock experience with a handful of features, features that are every bit useful. A few specifics I could note down with a week's worth of usage is the new and improved updater app. Although I still wish it wouldn't just download the entire zip for every update and would rather just build up on things that are actually being updated instead. I could also not get my previous TWRP recovery working with the ROM, I simply couldn't mount the data partition but a quick reflash later, everything works. Talking about the updates themselves, this year's a lot better. The nightlies are actually almost on time every single night as promised. For me, I've used the first nightly build for the majority and had run into zero issues but I decided to update to the latest one and it broke the alert slider. So yeah, the updates are basically all trial and error for now. I've installed Lineage OS 16 on not one, not two, but three phones and all of them work splendidly with the only variance being battery life. Let's now talk about the bigger picture that I mentioned before, the deal breaker with Lineage OS and that's the departure from Google services. With the release of Lineage OS 15 last year, the custom ROM distributor made a bold statement saying they don't need Google and that's basically what Lineage is now. When you flash the ROM file, you get absolutely zero services preloaded from Google. That's fine though, Lineage still kept its source code open, so a simple gapps flash would bring everything back. But the issue here is with the integration of software and the few stock apps that Lineage OS bundles with the ROM. The camera app from Snap, absolutely terrible, you cannot possibly live with it. The stock dialer and messages app seem outdated and don't work alongside with the dark mode that I mentioned prior. I talked about how using this ROM extensively gives you an appreciation for stock Android in my first impressions and that's because nothing with this ROM seems seamless. 
The lock screen is beautiful, very stock-like, but once you unlock your device, you get a half-baked launcher from Trebuchet. All the system menus and UI elements are stock, but you reply to a message and realize just how off the UI transition is. Basically, the more you use the Strom on a daily, the more you get annoyed by the little irks that lead to the drastic offsets. This in no way makes the ROM unusable though. I'd still rate Lineage OS 16 on top of all Pi custom ROMs available right now, thanks to its sheer performance and developer support. The rest is for you to decide. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode.